All right, so we're going to start with dividing polynomials. Okay, there are two types of division when it comes to these polynomial functions. There is long division, which is the worst type of division you can possibly do. Um, and synthetic division, which is the, I say, the shortest and easier way to figure it out. But you can only use that if you actually have a factor of that expression. Okay, so... I'm just gonna go through a summary of polynomials in expanded form. So remember, uh, the last value is always the y-intercept. So this, these are the y-intercepts over here. And this one has zero. No. Because it goes, this is the third lesson, then 3.4 is the fourth lesson. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So the end behaviors, if the degree is odd, the end behaviors are different. If the degree is even, the, the, the end behaviors are the same, okay? And we already discussed what happens, uh, where the graphs start at and end at in terms of the quadrants, okay? So we're gonna look at these few graphs that we already have sketched out. So we have y is equal to x, the degree is odd, the leading coefficient is positive, and it goes from quadrant three to quadrant one. And for y is equal to negative x, it is odd degree still because the degree is one, which is an odd number. Um, the coefficient is negative, so it goes from quadrants two to four. And for even polynomial functions, even degree, uh, so for x2 and negative x2, both degrees are even. Uh, one of them has a positive leading coefficient and the other has a negative leading coefficient. y is equal to positive x squared, goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. And y is equal to negative x squared, goes from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. So this lesson is... So under the... The uh, course, it's lesson 3.3. .3. I messed up the order. So it should say dividing polynomials. Probably, but not, not anytime soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys have the info second first. Wait, are we done with this unit? Yeah, those two, it's, it's, not, it's not long enough to, to there to be a test. It's just short enough to have a quiz. Sorry. Okay. So that quiz was the, the mark for the first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's worth 1%, so nothing too crazy. Still a percent. Yeah, that's true. It's 1%, which means it's 100% of your mark right now. Oh, yeah. That makes me feel better about my goal. <laughs> that was those little mistakes you guys made? You want to rub it in, sir. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, just you are. it's just embedded in your brain so you don't do those little mistakes again. So, obviously, we find a possible number of turning points in the degree. Did I just skip half the page? Oh, no. Okay. So, that is all just what we learned from the last uh, lesson in terms of the characteristics of a polynomial function. But now we're going to go into long division, okay? So, yeah. So long division can be, it's in the definition itself, it's in the word, it's long, okay? Uh, there's no such thing as a short, short division. Well, we can call that synthetic division, but we're going to do, I just want to do one example of a long division question. Uh, that way you guys know what to look for. Uh, and that way synthetic division is you guys are going to be like, yeah, I'd rather do synthetic division than long division. So remember, a long division can be used to determine the quotient of two numbers where the division statement would be. So the dividend, which is your number over here, uh, is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder 
That would be your division statement, okay? So what would the division statement be for 31 divided by 6? Well, what's the answer? Or just like the whole thing? Oh, well, we're going to do the long division process. Oh. Well, there's five exactly. sixes. We have to do long division with... All numbers. numbers. Okay. So this, the 31, is your dividend. The only dividend that's good in life is those you get from stocks. <laughs> Six is your divisor. These markers are acting up now. Yeah. So remember with long division, uh, we need to figure out how many times six can go into 31 without it going over five. So we do six times five, which is 30, which are subtraction. What's 31 minus 30? So this is our remainder. This is our R. And this is our quotient. So our division statement would be, so our DS is our division statement, is 31 is equal to our divisor, which is 6, multiply our quotient of 5, plus or minus our remainder, which is positive 1. So that would be our division statement for a long division question that only involves constants and no variables yet. So you're essentially your division statement is stating what you did to yep. figure it out. So two methods, like I said, long division. It sucks, okay? Uh, synthetic division <laughs> is faster and easier. But like I said, it can only happen when you actually have a factor. And what I mean by that is it has to be in the form of x plus 1, because x plus 1, when you simplify it, what's that factor? It would be negative one, right? So what would the root be? Oh. Think of this as an x-intercept. Oh. Negative one, right? Yeah. However, you can't do synthetic division when you have this. Wait, so you have to do long division because you can't you can't figure out the root. And if you move that over, you can't take the square root of a negative number, right? If it's, oh. So if you have this, you have to, you're forced to use long division. So it's only if it has a degree. But does yep. it depend on the degree? Nope. It's just as if it has a Yeah, that makes sense. But. Do you have a factor there? Can you do it that way? Yeah, because the factor of that is just x plus 2, x minus 2. So you can take either or and use it in synthetic division. Okay, so the rules are arrange the divisor and the dividend in descending order of degree. Okay, so if they're mixed up, so let's just say if x5 comes before x7, you have to switch the order because the highest degree always has to be first and then it goes in descending order after that. Uh, you want to insert a placeholder for the missing terms while uh, the process of division ends with the remainder ends when the remainder is zero or if the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. Okay, so what that means is you usually end with a, so let's just say the degree here is one, right? Okay, this one. Sorry, I don't know why I went on the left side. That means our remainder can only be a number, okay? Because the, what's a degree lower than one? It's zero, right? Which means it can just be a number, 
Okay. If that was x2, then our remainder can have x as the remainder. Okay. You guys get it? No. Okay. Yeah. So if we're dividing something by x squared, okay, our remainder can be a number or it can be something that has a degree lower than 2, which is what? 1. one right? So we can have x as a remainder, which we will look at. Some questions, I believe, have that. So we're going to look at example 1. We want to divide and express the result as a division statement. Uh, so you remember in elementary school when you had the strips? Tens, ones, decimal points, tenths, hundreds. Remember those? Oh my god. Thousand, like with the pH. Bro, That's a placeholder. So we have our first example. We have x plus 1 divided by 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x, because we have to go in descending order, minus 12. Okay. So what we want to do is we just want to focus on x, okay? This is your focus, okay? So what can we multiply x by to get to 3x cubed? 3x squared. So now like regular division, what do we do with 3x squared and x plus 1? We're going to multiply, okay? So what's 3x squared times x? 3x cubed. And what is 3x squared times 1? 3x squared. You're going to see why this is annoying because it gets long. So 3x, squared, 3x cubed minus 3x cubed. They cancel out. What is 2x squared minus positive 3x squared? Negative x squared. And with long division, what would your next step be? Which number do you drop? Mm -hmm. So you're going to bring down the negative 11x. So remember, we're still using x as our focus, okay? So what do we multiply x to get to negative x squared? Negative x. Okay, and now we multiply x, negative x by x plus 1. So what's negative x times x squared? And what is negative x times positive 1? Negative, negative x. Um, What's negative x squared minus negative x squared? What's this one? Oh, uh, negative 10. Oh, that's zero. Right. Zero. Uh, the first one. Zero. 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 Yeah, What's negative 11x? You already said it, you said negative 10x. Yeah, that's it. okay. And then what is our next step? Bring down the negative 12. Bring down the negative 12. Right, it's super long already. Now imagine this having two other terms. <laughs> so now again, we need to keep this focus on our x. So what do we multiply x by to get to negative 10x? Negative 10. All right, so what's negative 10 times positive x? Mm -hmm. And what's negative 10 times positive 1? 
negative 10. These should always cancel out, okay? Sure. What's negative 12 minus negative 10? Negative two. So negative two is our remainder. Does that mean that, like, the last, actually, never mind, the last term always has to be a constant? Oh. The last term should always be a constant, but if only no if the expression itself has a constant. Oh, so if there's no constant in the expression, it's going to have an x. Yeah. Oh, OK. So if there's a constant at the end, you'll have a constant remainder. If there's not, you'll have a variable as the remainder. Okay? So now we're going to write our division statement. So we have 3x cubed plus 2x squared. You know what? I'm not going to write that. Right there. So we're going to label this as f of x. So our division statement is f of x is equal to, what was our quotient? X plus one. Okay, no, x plus one is our divisor. Okay. Uh -oh. So, sorry, we start with our divisor first. What is our divisor? X plus one. What is our quotient? Three squared And what is our remainder? So this is our division statement right there. Five to eight. Mm -hmm. So like this one, mm -hmm. since like what would the degree be? Uh, so what's the degree of, so when you extend this, what is our degree still? So you're just going to look at f of x our dividend, and that tells you the degree of the polynomial function. So this is the dividend, okay? What is the highest degree of that dividend? So our degree is going to be three for that polynomial function. No matter what? No matter what. So like we just have to look at the one for the dividend? Okay. So how do you guys find this? Okay, so we'll do this. We have the time, so we'll do this next one. So we have first of all, is this is this divisor in order? No. How should it be written as two x plus one? And we have our dividend as, what would the order be? 4x minus 13x But with long division and synthetic division, you need to account for that x squared even though it's not there. So this is the only time in math you're ever allowed to write this. Wait, what? That feels the way so we always have to do this? Yeah, because if you don't write it and you mess up the place value of it, then you mess up your whole answer. So this this is applicable to anything, right? So for example, if it was the highest degree was four and it's missing a two and a one. Well, can you have to put zero x two and zero, zero x one? Yep. <laughs> minus thirteen x minus six. So again, our focus is going to be on two x. So what can we multiply 2x by to get to 4x cubed? Yep, 2x squared. And now we proceed with our following. So 2x squared times 2x, 4x cubed. Uh, 2x squared times 1, 2x squared. This is why that 0x squared is important. That way you don't mess it up. Because if you had that negative 13x next, you'd be like, oh. Some people would be like, oh, how do I subtract this? 
Because that place value isn't there. Okay? And then some people start doing some weird subtracting of exponents, and then they get the wrong answer. So what if that's the divide of two x plus one? Um, yep, and the dividend is the expression on the inside. What would happen if it was more than one? Like, with, and it has more than one variable. So it's, instead of being two x plus one, it would be like two x plus x or something. Would that impact the whole process of long division? Uh, you can no, you can long divide with the trinomial. Oh, okay. it's possible. It'll make the long division shorter because you have more variables in the divisor. So these cancel out. What's 0x squared minus positive 2x squared? Negative 2x squared. Remember, minus. Bring the 13x, negative 13x down. OK, so this one's pretty easy. What do you multiply 2x to get to negative 2x squared? Negative x. So I can see it's starting to become easier for you guys. You're just trying to get the gist of it. So negative x times 2x is negative 2x squared. And what is negative x times positive 1? Negative x. So like I said, these should all the time cancel out. What's negative 13x minus negative x? Negative 5x. We're almost done, guys. Bring the negative 6 down. So, how do we, where do we multiply 2x by to get to negative 12? Uh, negative 6. Negative 6. Hey, count your blessings. You guys got two lessons this week. Next week, you guys only have one lesson in person. So, it'll be much harder to do the online part. Because you guys are asking so many questions now. And then you guys are just going to be. You can just treasure it up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Really yeah, yeah. There's no one taking questions. Actually, no, I have questions. So what? So we brought this down. Okay, negative six. So we get negative twelve x. Cancel out. What is negative six times positive one? Negative six. And what's negative six minus negative six? Zero. So our remainder is zero. So we have no remainder. Okay. Um, do the like you said like you can just change that into f of x. We always have to save f of x. Okay, and then secondly, like do we do we also have to put the zero x squared in the dividend? Mm -hmm. uh, just because of that placeholder, right? Because if we didn't, we would have negative thirteen x minus positive two x no, squared. No, I mean like in the division statement. Oh no no no! Okay. You don't need the zero x squared. Yeah, I was gonna ask the same thing. So for the division do we include the zero remainder? No, no, no. If it's a zero remainder, you don't include it at all. So our division statement, so again, the function we call is f of x. So f of x is equal to, what is our divisor? 2x plus 1. And what is our quotient? 2x squared minus x minus 6. Yep. So that would be your division statement for that. Okay. And then we get to the easier part now. I mean, some people find long division easier. I mean, it's, not, it's not hard. It's just, easy. yeah, especially when you have a trinomial as a divisor. When you have, and it all depends on how big these expressions are, realistically. Okay? So with synthetic division, like I said, it's only used to divide a polynomial by a binomial in the form of qx minus p. So like I said, x plus 1, x minus 2, 2x plus 2, and so on. So we're going to divide the same thing here from question, from example A. Okay, we have the same divisor and the same dividend. All right, so you have x plus 1 divided by 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus, uh, minus 12 minus 11x. So what we're going to do first, this is going to be our synthetic division box, OK? If it's flipped. It is flipped, basically. So on the inside, you want to write all the coefficients in front of the variable in order, OK? Mm -hmm. So obviously, this is not in order yet. So in order, this would look like 3x cubed 
plus 2x squared minus 11x minus 12. So what we're writing on the inside is all the coefficients and their signs, okay? So the first one we have is positive 3, positive 2, negative 11, and negative 12. What I like to do is I like to draw a line at the end because this usually represents your remainder. Wait, sir, in the, in the long division, why don't you like, rearrange it so that the minus, uh, minus 11x didn't before? You did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you <laughs> so we have our factor as x plus 1. So since that's linear, okay, what is our, I guess if you were to isolate for x, what would our factor be? Wait, what? Yeah. Isolate for x, what is our factor? Negative 1. Okay. So basically the factor is whatever is in the bracket, you isolate for x, okay? So for example, we have x plus 1. Because what a factor means is just essentially an x-intercept on the graph, right? That's what a factor is. So x plus 1 is equal to 0, because that's when the graph is 0. We move the 1 over, we get negative 1, okay? And that would be our factor. So what you're doing here is you're just doing addition each time, okay? So I find it easier, some of you may find it confusing, uh, but you guys choose whichever way you find easier. So what we're doing first is we're dropping the three, okay? And just like regular long division, we're taking this number over here and multiplying it by our factor, okay? So what is 3 times negative 1? And you plug it into the next empty spot. What's 2 plus negative 3? Okay, and then same idea. Negative 1 times negative 1. What's negative 11 plus 1? Negative 10. As you can see, the numbers are the same. Okay, what's negative 10 times negative 1? 10. And what is negative 12 plus 10? Negative 2. And this is our remainder. And what was our remainder when we did it the first time in long division? Negative 2, right? So now because, with synthetic division, because the degree is decreasing by 1 each time you divide, Okay, so remember how we associated 3 with x cubed, right? Because we're dividing, it goes down by 1, okay? This was x squared, it's now x. This was x, now it's a constant. Wait, sorry, can you repeat that one? So this place order here, right, represented 3x cubed, okay? When we divide the exponent automatically drops by 1, okay? So our quotient would just be all of these degrees, you just subtract it by 1. Okay, yeah. Okay. So this x cubed that we had here turns into x2. The x squared that we had up here turns into just x. The x we had associated with this ends up as a variable with a zero, zero degree. And this last part, like I said, is associated with our remainder. So our division statement is going to be basically the same because we got the same thing in return. So what was our divisor? X plus one. What was our quotient? Mm -hmm. Minus 10 minus 2. 
Wait, real quick, sorry. So yeah. with the three, bringing it down, mm -hmm. you didn't really do anything to it, right? You just brought it back? Oh, okay. Yeah. So the first one is a good touch. It just, it just bring it down. Cool. The first one, you just bring it down. That's the first step. It's pretty easy. You just got to get used to it. Don't jinx it. Yeah. So based off this one example, what do you find more? I don't know. Honestly, I feel like they're both the same. Well, so the synthetic is way faster. Yeah, it is way faster. So okay. they bring it down time. Does it bring it down? But are you guys ready for a factor that has a fraction? No. That's oh. right. Wait, a fraction? Okay. So like when you have two x plus five, when you isolate for x, it gives you negative five over two. Oh look, oh, yeah. I predicted it. You have to keep the prize, you said. No, I honestly forgot what the question was. Oh, cool. So, oh, look, and we even have big numbers too. So, again, we start with our little box. Okay. Uh, is everything in order from least to greatest yeah. in terms of the, uh, the uh, exponents? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would we write inside? What coefficients? A four. Four negative. And then this last part is our remainder. Okay, what is our factor? Five over two. Oh, he doesn't like fractions. No one likes fractions. That's why you put them in decimal. That's why you put them in. Yeah, they say you so you bring the first one down. Okay. Remember, we're adding each time. So what is 4 times 5 over 2? 10. Oh, you're using calculator. Okay, fair enough. Sorry. That's okay. Um, 10? What's, neg what's negative 2 plus 10? 8. 8? <laughs> what's, what's 8 times 5 over 2? Oh, yeah. Like Yusuf, see? Yusuf's faster than the calculator. Hey, no, but it's okay. He's not even hard. using a calculator. You have to input it. Okay. <laughs> What's negative 30 plus 20? Negative 10. What's negative 10 times 5 over 2? 25. Negative 25. That's unfair. Hold on. I, I was laughing. I couldn't. And what's 90 plus negative 25? 65. Yep, 65. Okay. So this was associated with x cubed. When we divide, we get what? 4x squared. Then x, and then this stays by itself. Okay? So our division statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. f of x is equal to, we take our divisor, 2x minus 5, multiplied by our quotient, 4x squared, plus 8x minus 10, and then plus 65, which is our remainder. Okay? So is this faster now? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what is the one case where you can't use synthetic again? So if it's an addition? It's addition? Or if you have... More than one. Oh, okay. right, because it's in the form over there, yeah. So it can only be in the form of a linear function, basically. So like, are you going to give us questions that we so whenever you have this as the divisor, you're automatically using long division. There's no faster way aside from synthetic and long. Okay. Well, if I discover one, I'll be rich. But who knows? Wait, sir. Why do you use this like this? This one? Yeah. Because it's a trinomial, and you can't really factor it using uh, because it has x cubed, right? If it was x squared and you were able to factor it using some in product, then you would be able to use synthetic division because you would have two different factors. All right? So for example, let's take an easy one, x squared minus 2x minus 
3. So if we had this as our divisor, would we be able to factor it to simplify it using sum and product? Okay, what's our sum? What's our product? So now what two numbers multiply to give us negative 3 is that add up to negative 2? Synthetic. synthetic because you have two factors that you can pick from so like what's the easy way we can like know off the bat so the easiest way to realize once you synthetic division is if you have it like this straight up or if you have a trinomial like we had here and you can factor it so whichever one you can choose like, yeah same answer yeah. same answer well, what? What? Well, like get that but it's not factorable then you have to use long division. So as long as it satisfies the specific form. So if you have it already in that form as a factor, like 2x minus 5, use synthetic. Or if you're given a trinomial as a divisor and you can factor that trinomial, you can use synthetic division as well. Oh, wait. How can we? So like, we have to take out like a negative 3 and negative 1. Yeah. We have, like, how, do we, how do we do that? With you just pick one. You just pick one? Yeah. Because they're both factors, which means the graph at those points are going to be zero. That's crazy. Are you going to make us do one each or like choose between them? I'll probably give you one long division and like one synthetic division, then everything else is a free draw. But you guys have to know what to use. So, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Oh. There's one more page, but. <laughs> more examples page. <laughs> Let's see the more examples page. Uh, number four is pretty easy. Uh, number three, uh, we'll go through A and B. I just want you guys to tell me which one is easier to use, or which one we should use. Uh, for three A, for the example, x5 minus x3 minus x2 plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. Uh, would we use synthetic or long division? Okay. Can we use synthetic? No. Because no, it has the x squared. It's minus one. But if it has the x squared, yeah, you can't use it. But, 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 you know, but that's the only reason. Oh, what are you saying? You can, what does that look like, though? Yeah, because once you move the one over, it's positive. Yeah. Square one. Because it looks like a difference of square anyways, right? Right. Could still do oh, so that, oh, right, right, right. So it would be, it would be one of the ways. Yep. The, the divisor. So you can use both, okay? Because x squared minus one is equal to x plus one, x minus one. Wait, but can't you technically just do long division for all of them since that is just specific? Mm -hmm. And the next one, what would be the easiest way to do it? This is our divisor. This is our dividend. Is our divisor in the form of qx minus p? Yep. So what type of division can we use? Yep. I mean, both. Yeah. Yeah. Both, but because we have it in that form, we would just use synthetic. And then we're going to do the last one, example number maybe five. So we want to determine if x plus 2 is a factor of 3x minus x cubed plus 4 minus 6. So what does it mean when we're determining something's a factor? What does the whole expression have to equal to? Zero. So 
because when we say something is a factor, that means it's an x-intercept of the expression. Okay, so when we talk about x-intercepts, the y-intercept is usually zero, right? So we need to figure out if the remainder is zero. So we're going to do synthetic division, negative two. Uh, what is, should be our first number? Because this is in order. Or negative two. Oh, sorry. Uh, so one. What's the next coefficient? Negative two. Negative two. Do we have an x squared? Zero. Nope. So we put zero. Thank you. What's the next one? Thirteen. Thirteen. And the last one? Negative, negative six. Yeah. Okay. So bring the first one down. What's one times negative two? What's negative two plus negative two? Negative four. Oh, all close, yeah. yeah. What's negative four times negative two? Negative eight. Wait, sorry, what? Four? Negative four times negative two. Eight. Oh, positive eight. eight. Oh, wow, very dirty, bro. What's zero plus eight? Eight. Okay. What's eight times negative 60? Ah, I just said the answer. What's eight times negative two? If I do that sometimes, just... Tell me. I usually say the answer as I'm trying to say the question. <laughs> so I said 8 times negative 16 because I knew 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. Uh, what's 3 plus negative 16? Negative 3. And what's negative 3 times negative 2? 6. And what's negative 6 plus 6? Our remainder is 0, which means x plus 2 is a factor, right? Wait, so because remainder is 0, it's a, it's a factor. But if it wasn't 0, then it would Okay. Wait, sir, like for the question above, but if it had like x to the 4 and uh, x to the 3, would you put 0 in to go backwards? No, you can, don't go backwards. Right? If the highest exponent is 2, why would you want to add? No, I'm saying that like if there was 4 and then it was missing 3, you would have 2 and 1. Oh, you would add it, yeah. So you just add 0 to go back to like figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, the Example Yep, so you're just taking the divisor, which is x minus, you're basically just foiling this whole thing. Okay, so it's just, yep, yep. So all you're doing is foiling and expanding. That's all you're doing for example number four. So that's basically it for today. We did long division, synthetic division. We figured out the characteristics of polynomial functions in terms of their end behaviors, uh, the turning points, and the x-intercepts. Uh, on Tuesday, no, Monday, we will go through just one lesson, OK? It'll probably be about sketching these polynomial functions using what we learned today. Uh, a quiz will probably be late next week. Okay, I'm not trying to give you guys quizzes too often. I want you guys to practice this before you do the quiz. Uh, so other than that, we're pretty much done. Uh, you guys can either relax until back to the dog parks or do your homework. Uh, cohorts A and C, you guys can log off now. Uh, cohort A, I will see you on Tuesday. Um, so yeah, take care. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. And... Yeah, just have fun.